It is I, the most obnoxious dog mom. Mom. Now, I feel like there's always that one mom who just goes above and beyond and makes her kids the best costumes. I don't have a child, but what I do have... In my life, there are a few things I've come to accept. Number one. I am a complete stage mom when it comes to Frodo. Basically that clip of Mama June and Honey Boo Boo. That's me and Frodo. <laughs> Number two. I'm sure there are a lot of viewers on my channel that purely watch just for Frodo. It's okay. I get it. Number three. I'm horrible at sewing. So like the rational dog mom that I am, I wanted to dress up my son in a little vintage outfit. Why? because it'll be cute. And that leads back to number three of my life realizations. I am horrible at sewing. I am completely self-taught, which is usually used as kind of an endearing term. Not in my case. In my case, it's more like, oh, she's completely self-taught. That being said, if you're an expert seamstress, shield your eyes. But I am learning and I want to sew more. And I think little things like this are really good for a learning experience. So for now, it's gonna be a lot of horrible seams and fabric where it should not be. And sometimes hot glue gun. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to make my son into a little dapper man. And I thought I would take you along on this journey. Okay, so I am at the thrift store. It's real nasty out. See that branch holding on for dear life? Mood. <laughs> So the goal is to try to find some thrifted items that I can manipulate to look like dog clothes. <laughs> Generally looking in the kids section, maybe for like six year old clothes, I feel like maybe that'd be a good fit for my son. <laughs> maybe in the menswear to see if I can just get a cheap suit jacket or pants that I can just use the fabric from and alter. If I'm taking on a sewing project, I would much rather modify an already existing item. So I'm going to do my best for scump and sprint in there as fast as I can. Wish me luck. Moments later. <sighs> Yuck. That's nice. So I got this just basic pair of trousers that has an elastic waist and it's pretty big. So the more fabric I have to work with. A little kid's collared shirt. I got this big old men's blazer. Velvet, very hobbity. I know that velvet can be a biatch to work with when you're sewing, but this is just the, the kind of power vibe I want Frodo to give off. So I'm gonna see if I can make these work. What is all this? Sit. What is that? Wow! It's me and my son. Aww. I love it so much. That's big, huh? Child size my ass. You look like a man that turned into a dog. I swear, we're gonna make it better. <laughs> yeah, you hate that? Please forgive me. So for the pants, what I ended up doing first was cutting off the elastic waistband and then fitting it to his little waist and then just marking off where to cut that. For the pants cuffs, I took my own elastic and some of the extra fabric from the bottom of the pants, folded that over and then marked off where I wanted to sew and then sewed it. Ta-da! To slide the elastic through, I used this fancy little doohickey and just slid it through the fabric until I could reach it at the other end. I then sewed the two ends of the elastic together and voila, you have two little foot cuffs. For making the pants his size, I just followed the measurements that I took of his little body. Please tell me I'm not the only one who would rather distort her whole body like this rather than just get up and move. I then marked off the shape of them that I wanted with the pins. Keeping most of it intact so that I wouldn't have to do as much work. <laughs> That's so funny! Who is he? I then turned it inside out and sewed along these pins. After I had the cutest little pair of Frodo pants ever, 
I had to mark off the nub hole. Very important. I then pinned all the elasticized parts onto the pants and then sewed them. For the nub hole, uh, first I tried to do a fancy little setting in my sewing machine and that didn't work out very well, so I tried to do it by hand, but then realized that was gonna take me 3.3 billion years, so I said F it and moved on. Hi. Normal outfit? Maybe. Surprise, bitch. On second thought, Velvet might be the actual worst decision for a pet jacket in the entire world. Beep beep. Just roll on out, Autobots. I'm gonna get rid of those bulging shoulder pads, that's for sure. I want you to feel powerful and successful, but I think that's just a little too much. The jacket was definitely the hardest part for me, but I tried to just follow those measurements that I took earlier and just ended up ripping off the sleeves altogether because it made it a lot easier. I think sleeveless suit jackets should be a thing. I guess that would just be a vest. After ripping out the lining completely, I decided I needed to make the armholes a little bit smaller, so I pinned the fabric around it, trying to match some existing seams that were already there so it would be less noticeable. Question mark. And then what I'm doing here, which you can clearly see because I'm very good at framing my shot, is that I am pretty much doing what I did with the pants and just making the sleeves much thinner. I then sewed that on to the body of the jacket, but they were a tiny bit too short, so I decided to add the little cuffs with the buttons back onto it. And I had to make that a little bit smaller. So I pinned them on in a way that they would look rolled up, which honestly was probably the most confusing thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> it's fine. I then added on a couple of decorative buttons. And I also ended up putting the lining back in the lapel because I knew that it was going to be flopping open and it was just a mess down there. So the lining definitely helped to restore order. For the vest and shirt, I knew from the beginning that I just wanted to really use the collar and the first few buttons for this and not the sleeves because I knew they were going to be a little too tight on him. So I ended up cutting off what I didn't need, only seeing what you need to see of the white shirt. I then hot glue gunned it. <laughs> because my brain physically could not compute a good way to sew this, so I just, you know, did what I could. But it got the job done, so... So I took the child size hat and basically cut along the seams, pinned it from the inside, and then sewed it. Then with the help of my not so eager assistant, I tested out the length of the elastics that I wanted. I then just super glued the elastics onto the hat. You looking a little scruffy. I think we need to do one of those makeover montages. What do you think? Welcome back. So I thought we would um, look at the outfit in a little bit more detail. <laughs> so starting off with the little pantaloons. Oop, here they are, including the nub hole. These were still a little too loose on him and we had to keep hoisting them up like a diaper on him. But you know, I think they did the job and the nub hole was... So the vest and the shirt combo actually came out really cute for being hot glue gunned. I think the next family occasion that we're going to 
this will be making an appearance because it's so freaking cute on him. The jacket. The inside is atrocious. So I warn you now, if you have any heart problems or you're expecting, you might want to look away. <laughs> oh god. I don't want to talk about it. You know what? I am pretty dang proud of this little coat. This literally took me so long to make. And for a very, very novice sewer, it's not the worst. Sleeves are actually the bane of my existence. This sleeve came out a little bit better. And then this was my first sleeve and it's just, it's not great. Um, gave them little coattails, just so cute. Why are miniature versions of things always so freaking adorable? Making things in dog sizes and especially in Frodo size because he is the weirdest shape and actually never seems to fit in actual dog clothes and everything is a crop top on him. I'm proud. And then the hat didn't get a lot of love because he hated it. And then the little bow tie, courtesy of Nick. And that's it. That is the outfit. I am happy with it. He looked so cute that I was tearing up. So I think that's probably a sign that I accomplished my dream. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for coming with me on this journey. I hope it was enlightening for you. Don't worry, he got lots of treats and a big old walk. W-A-L-K. But in all seriousness, it was a very good learning experience for me, uh, especially taking apart the jacket and gutting it and learning how things were put together and worked. Maybe someday I can look back on this video and cringe. <laughs> That's gotta be a sure sign of progress and growth. To the cringe. <laughs> I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel, if you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload twice a week and we have fun here. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Number two. I'm sure there are a lot of viewers that... <laughs> Yes, I'm talking to myself in my car. Hello. <laughs> hey, I know you have a mic though. Hello. You can't just do that. No. John Ralphio? Alright, sick. And then the little bow tie, Cody C of Nick. So I think that's. I will. Where is my tape measure? Look at Dr. Doolittle. Nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do anything for treats. I would do anything for treats. But I won't do that. Mm, now I gotta edit all this hours of footage. Help. <laughs>